good afternoon. Just I wanted to share with each of you at this point in time, you can go to the Ebenezer Baptist Church uh, Facebook page if you so desire, and you can share the service with your friends and family. I believe it is live right now, and that way folks that are unable to be here will be able to join in on the homegoing celebration. Amen.
For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth and after my skin. As thus has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side. And mine eyes shall behold, and not another, my heart faints within me. It is true, brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The family is seated. Let the church say amen. amen. We are here to celebrate a life and to celebrate the life of Melvin Combs Jr. We are here to have a little church and to find sweet relief in the Lord because the Lord is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could think or ask according to the power that works in us. Trust in the Lord and God will show you how good he is. Amen. The family will, or the program, I'm sorry, has been ordered by the family, and it will proceed as printed. Let us pray. Precious Lord, our God and our Father, we thank you, God, for just one more day. For even though we're here to celebrate a life, God, we are still glad, oh God, that we ourselves have life and health and a reasonable portion of strength. Oh God, we pray for this family. We pray that you will keep them, that you would lift them on every leaning side. Oh God, I know you can do it. You've done it for me, oh God. I know you can do it for this family. I know, O oh God, that you can help them find joy in the midst of their sorrow. I know, O oh God, that you can help them, O oh Lord, to lean on the everlasting arms of the Lord. Bless them, God. Bless all who are here today. We thank you, God, for this pastor, Pastor Scobie. We thank you for Ebenezer. Thank you, O oh God, that they have been gracious and generous enough to open their doors. And we pray your blessings upon them. Do it for us, God. Bless us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. The solo by Sister Myra Beasley, and then acknowledgments followed by remarks, a special tribute. Sister Beasley will come again, I will come, and then we will close out with the video and tribute and pray.
And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Revelations 21 and 4. This is a re resolution for Melvin Combs Jr. Why shall we weep when the weary ones rest? In the bosom of Jesus supreme, in the mansion of glory prepared for the blessed death is no more than a dream whereas it brings sadness to the Avery Chapel AME Church family to record the passing of Melvin Combs Jr. lifelong member of Sons of Allen Steward Board and Scholarship Board we pray that the family will find comfort and consolation in the words of Jesus who said, cast your burdens on him, for earth hath no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. 
We commend you to him who is able to comfort you and wipe away your tears. And whereas our assembly here today is to help the family find peace and remember that 1 Corinthian, Corinthians 13 celebrates the depth and tenacity of the love that carries us beyond self-interest and mere affection. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things and it endures all things. Love never fails. Therefore be it resolved that Pastor D. Lavelle Crawford Sr., the officers and members of Avery Chapel AME Church, extend to the family our heartfelt sympathy. We bow in humble submission to the will of God, and we lift you in prayer during your time of bereavement. We commit the spirit of Melvin Combs Jr. Esquire into the hands of Almighty God, who is too wise to err and too just to make a mistake. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be held by the church for its record. Prayerfully and humbly submitted this 30th day of December, 2020, Avery Chapel AME Church Tiffany Tolfrey, Secretary, Reverend D. Lavelle Crawford, Sr., Pastor. Resolution in love and memory of Melvin Combs, Jr. We, the members of the Oklahoma City Association of Black Lawyers, want the family of Melvin Combs, Jr. to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid a goodbye to a fellow lawyer and community leader Whereas Melvin Combs Jr. knew the value of an education, sought and attained a Juris Doctorate degree from Oklahoma City University School of Law in 1972. Whereas Melvin Combs Jr. received the Oklahoma Bar Association Trailblazer Award and the ABL John Green Community Service Award for making a profound impact on the legal profession by paving the way for more African-American law students to pass the bar exam. Whereas, yes, that's, that's awesome. Whereas Melvin Combs Jr. was a part of forming the first integrated law firm in Oklahoma in 1974 and used the firm's library at night and on the weekend to tutor Afri African-American law students helping more than 100 students prepare for and pass the Oklahoma bar exam without seeking compensation or recognition. Whereas Melvin Combs Jr. Yes, was a role model and known as the godfather to so many African American attorneys in the Oklahoma City area. Whereas the ABL deeply mourns the loss of our beloved brother in the law and father of ABL member, Lori Combs. We share your grief and carry the burden of your loss with you. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Melvin Combs Jr but we'll attempt to demonstrate our admiration of him and his accomplishments by being competent members of the legal community who mentor others, exhibit a command of the law and legal ethics as did he. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be delivered to the family of brother in the law, Melvin Combs Jr humbly submitted on this 30th day of December, 2020, by the Oklahoma City Association of Black Lawyers. 
Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. To the family of Mr. Melvin Combs Jr., whereas it has pleased the Heavenly Father to call home, Mr. Melvin Combs, we extend our deepest and heartfelt sympathy to his loving and most dedicated daughter, Lori Combs, our friend and classmate, as well as relatives, Angela Stevenson and Michael Haywood, also our classmates, and to the entire family. And whereas there are many left to cherish Mr. Melvin's memory, we pray you find comfort and consolation in the words from the book of Proverbs saying, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. We pass this way only once but there is a promise of another world to come for those that put their faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lori, we love you. You and the entire family will be in our prayers. Mr. Melvin was a true Trojan in so many ways and a true Trojan father to many of us. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family prayerfully submitted Frederick Douglass Senior High School Class of 1980 alumni. Michael Haywood, President. Is there any from the class of 1980? Would you please stand at this time? God bless you. I'm just going to acknowledge the other resolutions and the family will have a copy. There is a resolution from Prospect Church. Dr. Lee E. Cooper Jr. is a senior pastor. There is a resolution also from Douglas High School, the class of 1975. Is any members here from the class of 75? Would you please stand? Any from the class of 75, Douglas High School. There is also a resolution from your very own Ebenezer Baptist Church. Pastor Derek A. Scobie is our pastor, First Lady Angela Scobie. And then there's a resolution which is from the Northeast Resource Center as well. And then there is a card that was sent to the family and it is from Gracie Jackson Hicks and family and this will be available for the family. God bless you, we love you and we're praying for you. there's a lot and then there's rare which means there's more than one but few then there's unique which means there's only one Melvin was reared as an only child two kinds of only children the selfish because they get everything and the needy who give away and beg for attention. I said he was unique. He was neither of those. He got the attention of someone who would have begged because he was just that kind of a person. He's my brother. I'm not doing real well with this, but I moved here in 1980 and within a few months was pregnant 
was at a bar seminar because I was in the U.S. Attorney's Office. This very handsome, well-dressed man walked up to me and said something very inappropriate and rude. And then he smiled. That was Melvin. Thereafter, every time I had a case with a white lawyer, this Melvin would appear. What did you say to them? They came to me. They said, Melvin, who is that? Melvin took me as his sister. He never took me home to sleep with Shari and Lori. He took me to Northeast 18th Street to Mother Combs and Pops. And when the weather got bad and the kids need to be in school, I got a call from Mother Combs, y'all come on. And we slept upstairs. That's the kind of brother that he was. He said a lot of nasty things to me. <laughs> a lot of nasty things. He critiqued my clothes. He called. He asked me legal questions, then he argued with me. But the one thing he always did it's the only person in my life, the only person in my life, including my parents, he always smiled when he saw me. That let me know he loved me. He was very demanding. I cooked for Melvin and Pops when Mama Combs died, and I cooked for Melvin all the way through. He demanded by brand the fruit that he wanted, by brand. He demanded how the fish was to be cooked, how the chicken was to be cooked, and I did it. I got called stupid by a whole bunch of people, but I did it. In closing, let me say, I've tried to be a good Amy. I've not done well these last few days. I've not been the good Amy. I'm gonna try to be the good Amy. When I get strong enough to be the good Amy, but let me tell you, on behalf of Melvin, I got words for you, Corey. It's okay to be happy and selfish. You're an only child. It's okay to try to be a good daddy. The one thing that's not okay is to disappoint your grandpa. If he was the one person, the one, never gave up on you. I'm going to be a good, great Amy. Because I'm going to be a good auntie to your mama. For the rest of you out here, try to be unique. Try. Don't be bountiful. Don't be rare. Be unique. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Sullivan, and I had the pleasure of being Melvin's Combs friend since 1959. The first meeting wasn't real good <clears throat> because I went to Northwest Class in high school, and he went to Douglas High School, and we were playing in the regional finals. And we had a five point lead with a minute and 30 seconds left to go, and we lost the game to Douglas for the third year in a row. And Melvin Levitt never let me forget that. I mean, every time we start talking basketball, he'd say, remember when? And one day, he really got me really mad. Because he said, Sullivan, it's a good thing they didn't have integration in 1959. And I said, why, Melvin? Because he said, I would have been starting in your place. <laughs> and he was right. He was right. I want to fast forward from 1959 to 1972. And that's when our paths really crossed. Uh, I was with a uh, firm at that time, uh, Claude Love, Herb Graves, and myself. And Herb was the chair of the Oklahoma Legal Intern Committee. And in order to be a legal intern in Oklahoma, you couldn't work for a firm or a lawyer who had a complaint pending against him. And unfortunately, at the time, this particular lawyer had a complaint. It was a frivolous complaint, but nevertheless, he had it and he couldn't have Melvin as an intern. So Herb comes to us on a Friday, and he said, I met this young man today. He needs a sponsor. Can we sponsor him? And we all said, you bet. Tell him to come on in. 
Monday morning, Melvin walks in. Now, Herb didn't prepare us for the fact. <laughs> of, who, of who Melvin was. And, but he came in, and that started a friendship, uh, later a practice of law, and later a firm that I have treasured all of my life. Um, we b bought some land on Classen Boulevard. We built a building, and we met, formed the new firm. Outside on the front, it said Sullivan, Grays, and Combs on the street on Classen Boulevard. And um, that's how I met Eleanor <laughs> during those times. But w the strangest story, and it's terrible that we weren't really aware of what was going on. I swear it took us 10 years to figure this out. But on the evenings and on the weekends, we'd come in and Melvin had the biggest office, my office and his office were the two largest offices. And they were the nicest offices. And he was on one side and I was on the other. And I'd come in and he'd be in the library with a bunch of clients. And I kept thinking, well, you know, what's wrong with your office? You have a really nice office. And for 10 years, we didn't know what the heck was going on. But for 10 years, he was helping young law students write for the bar exam. Melvin was a pharmacist. He learned to write as a pharmacist, not as a lawyer. So it took him a second try, and he passed with flying colors. And he helped, I would say, over 100. Lori and I never could figure out the right amount. I wanted to get a, a, the people to come forward, but she said, no, don't do that. So anyway, he helped 110 at least lawyers prepare for the bar, pass the bar, and become lawyers in this community and other communities. But most of all, uh, Melvin Combs was my friend. And I've treasured that friendship for all of these years. I sent out an email when I found out that he had passed, and Judge uh, Dan Owens sent me an email, and he said he was a good man and a real gentleman. And you can't ask for much more than that in the practice of law when you're dealing with other lawyers. I'm just blessed that I had the opportunity to spend those years with Melvin, and more than likely, I'm gonna see him before you do, and I'll tell him hello. Because 
Good afternoon. My name is Gwyneth Marshall Eldridge, and Lori gave me grace to allow me to say something on behalf of Melvin. I was one of those students that Melvin allowed. Without him, I wouldn't have passed the bar, just, just no way. I was from Texas. I had never stepped a foot in Oklahoma, and he tutored me in the law. And when I would turn in my writing projects, they looked like they had been murdered. And he asked me, who are you? Don't nobody care what you think. What is needful is what did the court say? What did the judges say? What is the precedent of this matter? And that is what he taught me. So fast forward, I'm taking the bar. I get up in the morning and my car doesn't start. I call Lori Combs. We had studied for the bar together. She placed her future in my hands by coming to get me so that we could both take the bar together since we had studied together. So she loved me from the very first time that she saw me and I was from Texas and you from Oklahoma are hard to get to know. <laughs> but she let me in her heart. Now, I have something to say to you, Lori, and it comes directly from God. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you into myself. And Thomas asked, where you go? We know not the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, when I had the opportunity to minister to Melvin as he was preparing for his journey, for his mansion, he was unsure whether he had a mansion. And I assured him, Melvin, you have lived and breathed and been a walking example of who Christ was at life. And it is God who is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. And with no hesitation, he smiled and he rested well with his efforts. Rest well, Melvin. Afternoon. I'm going to first read something that Skip Kelly sent. He's suffering from COVID and can't be here. He says, he was my friend, mentor, teacher, so kind and helpful, never asked for anything in return. He cultivated in so many that we could be better if we was there for each other. A perpetual state of love, peace, and happiness. Though he fought one of the worst battles that any person could endure, your fight was more for your family and your friends. Melvin, you never gave in. But every great warrior deserves rest. Great day of victory is now bestowed upon you. The vault of your memories is our reward of knowing you. Thank you, Sign Skip, the dude that met you in 1972 at Humpty Dumpty Pharmacy. <laughs> I first give honor to God 
who is my everything. Growing up under Melvin Combs was a very difficult journey. I can remember my first memories of him was when I was three years old. And I got in the bed with him and I opened his eyes and I just bothered him and bothered him and bothered him. And my parents divorced soon thereafter. But there has not been a day, an hour, that I could not pick up the phone and find my daddy. He was a young father. They started when they were 16 years old. So mama and daddy grew up with us. We grew up together. He had a very strong foundation. Mama Combs and Pops raised him to be the great man that he is. Some say he was a genius. Some say he was brilliant. Up until two days before God called him home and his body had just dissolved away. But that genius, that brilliant mind was still as strong as ever. The nurses said the last thing to go is his hearing. And they said that he would not make it to Christmas. If you did not know him, this was very, very telling of who he was. God woke me up at 11.50 on December 25th. And I could tell by his breathing that we were at the end. I called Corey, I said, come on, baby. Melvin refused to stop breathing until the clock struck midnight. And knowing him the way I knew him, he would not leave us on Christmas. He just would not do that. So at 12.03, he took his last breath. On December 26th, he would not leave us on Christmas. A lot of people say, you've been through a lot. I have, but my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ carries me daily. It's easy for me to say, woe is me. I lost my sister, I lost my mother, and I lost my father in the year 2020. But God, but God, and my prayer every day is use me, Lord. Let your light so shine in me that others might ask, what must I do to be saved? Melvin had a saying if you say, why me? He say, why not you? And that's the way he Oh, I'm not going to go too far, but. His way of teaching, as Eleanor said, he was very unique. He taught you in his own way. Never, ever fussing, arguing, 
or anything like that. But when he got through with you, and as Eleanor said, he said some nasty things. But when he got through with you, you did just exactly what he said. And the way he taught you, it stays with you forever. I can remember studying for the bar, even studying to get into law school and then going through law school. He never left me. He was a very disciplined man. So whatever we did became routine. So every evening, for about four years, every evening without fail, he sat with me. He didn't say a whole bunch, but when he did, you remembered what he said. I'm going to close now. And the last thing I told him was, Daddy, rest. Rest. I'm going to be OK. I thank you for all of the love that has been sent our way. All I ask is just be there for me in my down days. Daddy, tell Shari I love her. Tell Mama I'm going to have our first birthday without her. Tell my grandparents, I'm going to keep trying to make them proud. I'm going to do my best. But I am one of the bl most blessed people around because my mama and my daddy poured. They literally poured their life into me. And I can make it. I can make it. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Now let the redeemed in the Lord say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let the church say amen. amen. Now let the church say amen again. Amen. Now if you know the Lord, why don't you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's give God some praise all over the building. To this great pastor, this community pastor, Pastor Scobie, and the officers and members of Ebenezer, uh, and to the officers and members of uh, Avery Chapel, and for those of you who may not know and just didn't catch it on the program, I'm uh, Reverend D. Lavelle Crawford, the uh, pastor. Uh, over at Avery Chapel and uh, we are grateful for what God is doing uh, through this ministry here at Ebenezer uh, it is no secret what God is doing Pastor Scobie and uh, we are proud and glad about your impact on this community and so we thank God for you to all of you, my brothers and sisters who have come, and since I've taken my mask off, I'm going to ask if you keep yours on. Amen. Um, I uh, was a little overwhelmed when 
Gloria asked me to uh, preach, even though Melvin was a member of Avery, I, I figured that maybe Melvin had given her uh, some instructions, but maybe she just understands uh, how much Avery meant to Melvin as well. I don't want to keep you. Uh, we all understand what kind of situation we are living in, so let's go ahead and get this done. Amen? From the book of Acts, chapter number 20. I had read verse number 24. And uh, I don't mind telling you, Lord, it was uh, just tough trying to get a word that was appropriate for uh, Melvin Combs and for his eulogy. But then I had to understand, uh, you all have just preached his eulogy. You really have. And so I'm relieved that I don't have to try and, and come behind you and preach his eulogy. Um, I want to read from the book of Acts chapter 20, not just verse 24, but I want to read from the New Living Translation beginning at uh, verse 18 down to and through uh, verse 24. When they arrived, he declared, you know that from the day I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. Doesn't that sound like Melvin? <laughs> I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. Verse 24, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. I just want to talk to you from uh, this topic just briefly. Uh, I want to talk to you from the topic, how to finish with joy. How to finish with joy. What do you do when your world has been turned upside down? What do you do when you have now been ordered and charged in order to save not only your life but others, you have been charged to wear masks in church. Those of us who are church folk, we know how difficult it is to be charged to wear masks in church. Because if you are a church person, if you uh, love to praise the Lord, you understand that somehow, some way, you can't get your praise on like you used to. Amen. And you ought to be concerned about others before you're concerned about yourself. I know that you can get your praise on in church, but if your praise is going to endanger others by allowing you to spray your spittle all over the church, then that's not much of a Christian. But what do you do uh, when the day comes where you feel like the sun refuses to rise and blot out the dark moments in your life? What is your response when you feel like you've been thrown into a world of chaos where people can actually be brazen enough 
to challenge a fair and legal election as if they had a birthright to it. Can I get a witness in the house? What is it that's left to do, brothers and sisters, when life has shackled your hopes, arrested your dreams, and incarcerated your future? What do you do when no matter what you do, uh, what you try to do, or who you do, <laughs> you still find no joy? Well, I love what Paul is doing here in this text. Because first of all, it seems at first glance to be irrelevant uh, to our current circumstance. But Paul uh, begins, uh, to me, he begins uh, by sharing why he's doing what he's doing. And I love what the sister from Texas said. Uh, I was about to stand up and begin uh, doing what I'm doing, uh, but she interrupted me. Hallelujah. And that's, that's a good thing because, you know, God will interrupt your program. God will interrupt your plans. And he will call sometimes your plans to fall through so that his plan can come through. Hallelujah. And so the sister began to talk about Melvin Combs. And she shared with us how Melvin lived the gospel. And some of us brothers and sisters are, are uh, just, uh, I won't use the word ignorant because that's not nice. Uh, but some of us are just um, lost enough in understanding of the gospel to believe that our service and work inside this building is all that's required. And that what we do in the house of the Lord is <clears throat> somehow a sign and example of what Christians are all about. Let me tell you today, just in case you leave this building believing that, you are wrong if you believe that. Because Christians do their work outside of the building. Uh, trucks are on their way uh, to this parking lot because the pastor and members understand that Christians do their work outside of the building. Melvin uh, did his work outside of the building. And if you knew him, uh, and you knew the Lord, you understood that he must have had an inkling of understanding of what God's purpose and plan for him was all about. And, and that's the joy, brothers and sisters. That's the joy. That, that's the joy. That's how you finish with joy. And I, you finish with joy by knowing what your purpose is. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Uh, but, but brothers and sisters, you, Melvin knew what God called him to do. And he understood that sometimes he had to tell it like it is. Because some of us don't understand uh, uh, sugarcoat talk. Some of us don't understand, uh, you know, when mama, you know, I have five children. Let me see if I can help you all understand. We have five children. And we learn uh, that uh, we learn a people, a social lesson because of the five children we had to, uh, to raise. And we learn, Sister Crawford and I, uh, Stephanie, we learn that they don't all react the same way. They don't all learn the same way. Uh, you were just one, Sister Lord, but let me help you understand. When there are five of y'all in the house, uh, you can't, you, can't, uh, you can't pat them all on the head to get them to do right. Now, I have one, have one child. Uh, if I just looked at her the wrong way, she started crying. Because she's sensitive to what daddy wants her to do and sensitive to what the right thing to do is. On the other hand, 
Uh, my son, my one and only son, uh, he's, he's visiting now. Uh, uh, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't respond to looks. Amen. I, I had to lay holy hands on him <laughs> to get him to understand. And, and many of us are like that, brothers and sisters. In fact, all of us learn differently. Our children learn differently. Saints learn differently. We understand differently. And so... Uh, Melvin knew that it's all about what you know, and I want to bring this thing to a close. He, he understood, I believe, that it's, it's about not only what you know, but who you know. Amen. Uh, I was glad when uh, my brother came up. Uh, is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. Uh, my brother came up, uh, uh, who was with Melvin in, uh, in the legal profession for a long time and talked about uh, the school that he attended and the school that Melvin attended, but it's, it really is about who you know. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul is helping us to understand in this text, it really is about who you know. Paul had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I cannot leave family without, without sharing with you all that you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're going to have joy, if you're going to finish with joy, you got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ because Jesus is the strength of my joy. He's all my joy. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is the one I can call on when I, when I don't have anybody else to call on. When daddy is gone, when, when my sister is gone, Jesus is still right there. And, and, my, and my sister brought that scripture to you, Laurie. Uh, uh, let not your heart be troubled. All right? Jesus is trying to tell you, when everybody else is gone, I'll be there. Hallelujah. Y'all remember the Jackson 5? Michael, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. So Paul had a relationship with Jesus. He, he understood uh, uh, because he, 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 he didn't allow his circumstances to destroy his position or his, uh, his trust or his belief in what God could do or what God was already doing. Uh, uh, the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, uh, the writer wrote, he said, For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, angels nor uh, principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things yet to come, uh, 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 nor height nor debt, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in our Lord Christ Jesus. You have to know Jesus Christ if you're going to finish with joy. Now, you can do it all on, on your own. You can, you can go out there. And just, ha you know, just have a party over here, party over there, party back there. And you can do it all on your own. And at the end of your life, find out that you could have done so much more had you had a relationship with Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something about people who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't struggle to do uh, uh, what you struggle to do. People who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, they don't pay as much as you pay for stuff. Hallelujah, somebody. Because, because look, because, because we know what it's like to be broke. A lot of us, some, some of y'all young folk, you don't know what it's like to be broke. Amen. You living with mom and daddy and still expecting them to pay for your bills and you drinking up all the Kool-Aid in the house. You don't understand what struggle is. But when you struggle, you understand that the Lord will make a way. Let me, let me, let me bring this thing home. It's, Paul understood it's about staying inside your purpose. That's what I love. Melvin understood his purpose, and he stayed inside his purpose. That's it, brothers and sisters. So stay. Look, uh, uh, don't look at your neighbor. Don't, do, don't do it. Don't look. Don't do it. Just don't do it. But just think about looking at your neighbor and say, stay in your lane. <laughs> Amen. Stay inside your purpose. If you are a trustee, stay inside your purpose and stop trying to do the jobs of the deacons. I'm rolling like that because I'm in a Baptist church now. Stay inside of your purpose. 
Amen. You, you run in your lane because when you start running in somebody else's lane, somebody's going to get hurt. We have some people who ran track in here. Amen. You ran track or you were on, you were on the track team or you were, you were somehow uh, you were on the field. You understand very well that if I run in somebody else's lane, somebody's going to get hurt. Let, let me leave. Stay in your lane. That's the lesson of how to finish with joy. And then finally, finally, I'm going, I'm going, to, I'm going to finish. Uh, it starts with Jesus, finishing with joy, and it ends with Jesus. Amen. Uh, uh, in, in John 15, 11, uh, Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. And that your joy might be complete. That your joy might be full. Hallelujah. Now, I could close there, Pastor Scobie, but I, I, I'm going to shut it down and go home. Amen. Because, because uh, wherefore seeing we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. I believe Melvin stayed in his lane. I believe Melvin understood what he was supposed to do. His work was not coming into church and shouting all over the church. His work was helping somebody outside of the church and demonstrating and modeling what Christianity was all about. How to finish with joy? Start with Jesus and finish with Jesus. Bless you.
I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some lonely nights But when I When I look around And I think things over All of my good days I'll weigh my I'll weigh my bad days Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road And I asked a, a question, Lord
Brothers and sisters, since we will not be going to uh, the cemetery, I want to uh, go ahead and recognize interment rights uh, before we leave here. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble, comes forth like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and continues not. In the midst of life we are in death, and whom may we seek for succor but of you, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased, Yet, O oh Lord, O oh Lord God most holy, O oh Lord most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. You know, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord most holy, O oh God most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior, your most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from you. Since it has pleased Almighty God, his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, Melvin Combs Jr., we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection of the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty workings whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice a voice from heaven saying to me, right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. So says the spirit, for they rest from their labors. God, we thank you. And now may the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of you. Hence and now and evermore, let the people say amen. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Thank you. 